My approach to cooking is complicated. <laughs> I've never seen someone as uh, precise, focused, detail-oriented. If he can do something and make it more difficult, he will. <laughs> He's almost like a surgeon or an engineer in the way he approaches things. He's an absolute perfectionist. If there's a seemingly simple presentation on a plate, it's had hours and hours of labor and thought behind it. Having someone of Matthew's class and caliber at the helm it makes it easier for the project to become even more ambitious. We're, we're shooting for the stars now. I think Chris and I had been talking about doing a simple French bistro for a long, long time. Asim and I traveled together quite a bit, and uh, our travels often take us to France. And one of the things that we enjoy doing together is going to a good traditional French bistro and having some onion soup or steak tartare or bouffe bourguignon. And we wanted to do something like that that was, that was classic, but at the same time progressive. We, we did start out with these ethos, but then the team kept trying to progress the cuisine. And over time, it became something very, very different from the original brief. We had a lot of critical acclaim at the old restaurant. It didn't come quickly, but it came. The neighborhood loved the restaurant. Um, Hong Kong diners loved the restaurant. One of my best memories was uh, when we made it to the 50 mm. best list, uh, which was really a big uh, milestone. Guest expectations were so large that that restaurant did not, would not support the type of restaurant we had to run. The infrastructure wasn't there. Over time, as the cuisine evolved, uh, we also outgrew the hardware of the restaurant. So uh, we, want, we want to create an environment that matches the culinary ambitions. So the inspiration behind the design of Boulogne really came from chef's cooking and his cuisine. Um, the way that he approaches it really inspired us to look at the design in a very meticulous way. Uh, we looked at the restaurant as giving a very surreal experience for the diners. We actually created these kind of dish-like reflective ceilings, um, much like the surface of water and how that would reflect, essentially placing the guest underwater. It's much more spacious, um, it's much more elegant and comfortable for guests as well to be in. Chef uses a lot of um, traditional ingredients, but using very innovative kind of methods. Um, so when we approached the design and thought about the material palette, we use um, traditional plaster um, against kind of these very sinuous, forward-looking, futuristic forms of pewter. So it's kind of this juxtaposition of, of the two that speak to his cuisine. I really like the fact that we have now four chairs in the kitchen and we'll soon be able to offer an in-kitchen dining experience. And it's a good transition now also to have this kind of like beautiful door in front of the kitchen. It kind of looks like one universe. I'm just so excited to be in this new space and just to see what we can all achieve together. More than anything, I want to be warm and gracious to the guests and I want them to feel welcome. They just want them to feel like I'm welcoming them into our home for the evening and then it's going to be a wonderful evening and hopefully the best meal of their life. Yeah, I just hope it's delicious, really, you know? I've always loved Beilat, um, so just to be a part of its uh, continued story, um, it's just an awesome experience. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to know Matthew over the last year. I mean, he's unbelievable. Uh, he's he's, a, he's a definitely an animal of the kitchen. First job I ever had was, uh, was in a restaurant, and I got moved to the kitchen shortly uh, after starting at 15, and I've been doing it ever since. Um, what got me involved with fine dining was reading cookbooks of grand chefs back in the late 90s in the U.S. Uh, Alfred Portali, Jasper White, uh, Thomas Keller's French Laundry Cookbook. That's when it went from cooking uh, as just a way to stay up late into something that I said, this is actually a venerable profession and something that I can pursue. And here I am 27 years later. I cooked for seven years before I switched to the front and I needed a job. And my partner at school, in my class at the time, said, hey, I work at this restaurant. They're looking for a salad cook. It was a crappy restaurant, but Matt was there for a couple months because he was waiting for his real restaurant to open. It was delayed, of course. And so he became my sous chef. I was totally green. I was in culinary school. He made me a list. I still have a, a hundred influential restaurants or chefs in the world and sort of introduced me to the, to the whole wide world of cooking. Yeah, we were just briefly working together then, and I, I went on to 
open L two O and you know, and we stayed in touch and then ended up dating one another. That's very formal. We didn't stay in touch. We just started dating. And then yeah. we got married later. Yeah. <laughs> we had three kids. <laughs> Great restaurants are more than just the food, you know? Um, that service, I, I feel, is an equal standing with the culinary side of things. And um, you can't have one without the other. And uh, you know, I'm lucky to have my life partner out here, um, you know, who just does a phenomenal job at you know, keeping things as they should be, and also keeping things warm and hospitable, right? I've just always been super impressed with Matt, that's the truth. Uh, I love eating his food and I love watching him work, so I just hope that the standard of service um, showcases his food as well as it can. My dishes on opening night, it'll clearly kind of have my imprint on it that I hope they feel in line with what Bailan is. We're hoping for an evolution, not a revolution, and the way that we're approaching the cooking. You will be aware of what's on the plate. There will not be many elements on the plate and each element will be absolutely perfect. It's an old Robichon thing actually that like you don't, I try not to have more than three primary flavors on the plate, right? The, it, once it gets too convoluted, things get lost, things get muddied. So I'm really just trying to present things as they are um, and make them as bright and as straightforward as possible, I suppose. When we tell the guest about the dish, we're just going to tell them what it is. Um, we don't want to interfere with their experience, if, 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 but if they want to know more, we're going to know every little detail about that dish so we can explain it to them. Bailana is kind of this storied history of wrapping stuff in gluten. You know, that uh, there was a lot of like uh, stuff wrapped in brick dough or stuff wrapped in pastry. And, you know, that was really the first thing that I started working on at Bailana. The Cervella Lyonnaise, uh, obviously I associate heavily with Lyon that I've spent a good amount of time in just from Boku's Door competitions. And, you know, again, just another like kind of classic throwback, but also just has a boatload of technique to it that I really like the simplicity of just having a piece of bread on the plate, but just the, the work that goes into getting that right. Um, that's the kind of stuff I really dig as a chef is it, it's very simple looking. Um, it's very complicated to get right. Uh, Salad Gourmand, that's another tip of my cap to old school French stuff. We've contemporized its plating, we've put our own spin to it. It's actually kind of grown into a combination of a really classical preparation called a Lucilis de Valencens, which is a layering of veal tongue and foie gras that makes up the base of the dish now. But, you know, at the heart of the old Salad Gourmand was truffles, foie gras, Harry Cobert, um, which all find their place on the dish. And we've just kind of put our own touches to it. The Pigeon Pithivier has been on the menu for a couple of years now. We've just kind of elaborated on it. We've added some kind of classic veg, glazed carrots and turnips and cabbage. Um, you know, again, intentionally simple, but well done. And again, it's just one of those dishes that remains iconic to the restaurant itself. I'd like to think that, especially in the world of celebritized chefs and this and that, that I like that the restaurant is associated with that dish, you know, and it's a Bailon dish, you know. Um, so that's why it finds itself on the menu still, is that we really love that dish and so are the guests. The turbo dish was on, was one of the first dishes I developed for Qua, actually. Um, it, it came about as kind of a loving homage to a couple of different chefs. The scales on top, um, you know, I always associate heavily with Robichon. Uh, it's an old black truffle and celery root punch on top that, that I just kind of changed and made into our own. The Burr Concalaise is actually a kind of side condiment that um, uh, Philippe Rochat used to do at the Hotel de Ville. The dish kind of got born out of respect to that old tradition. Um, it's intentionally kind of a throwback. And at the end of the day, it's, it's a it's a turbo and butter sauce, right? You know, that it's approachable, but there's a little bit more behind it for those that, uh, you know, the more foodie types that I think it's an accessible dish, but simultaneously um, it's done me well the last uh, several years. We want this to be best in class. We want this to be uh, not the city's best French restaurant, but the region's best French restaurant. We're hoping that uh, Blonde will continue 
to be an international fine dining destination. When critics talk about the best French restaurants in the world, I wouldn't belong to be on that list. That's the ambition. The end goal is to make people happy, right? You know, for all the work and all the stress we put ourselves through, that we're just trying to spread joy, right? And the older I get, the more interested I am in getting back to that. I hope people just have a great time at the restaurant and the food's delicious. I'm excited that, we, that we've started writing chapter two in the book of Belong together.